And so I think that when we do surrender, we lose the fear of we lose the fear of dying, and we also then accept the the life that we're leading, and we live it to its fullest. Because once we know that we will die and we surrender to it, then we have no op, no other choice but to surrender. It's just it, I don't think it's so much the fear of dying or leaving. I think it's maybe more of the fear of suffering and and the ego. I think it's important for us to to, to develop the, the self-love and learning from the lessons as opposed to diminishing ourselves with, with, with situations. Yeah, totally, totally. Would uh, Yeah, and that brings thoughts of um, when, you, when we're in the victimhood, I guess you could call it, then we create more circumstances energetically to keep us in a victim space. And it's, it's that, you know, that never ending until we get out of it and realize it feeding loop where, you know, one thing after another, I'm, oh, you know, I'm a victim. This is happening to me, <clears throat> which is part of the pro, or part of the, well, part of the program, but also part of that spiritual, I believe it's that part of that spiritual and personal growth, right? The victimhood, maybe yeah. when we first get started. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also think we need a sound body and sound mind in combination. And what I mean by that is, is that if we don't have the energy, the, the physical energy to yeah. overcome because we're exhausted or tired, then we get caught up in that cycle. And that's the only way we can get an, ener an ener adrenaline flow by creating some type of drama in our lives that stimulates us to try to overcome and get out of the circle. And we can't get out of the circle when our energy is low, and that just keeps draining us. So right. We have to just change the change the channel and do something physical right. to become become you know change the trajectory of where we're at or where we're going. Yeah, yeah. That's why on the emotional scale, I feel that um, <clears throat> in this you know that emotional scale with shame and and grief, shame, guilt, and yes. grief are at the bottom. And that's what causes depression and, and all of that, which there's no movement, but anger is like a few above it. And it's like, at least with anger, there's movement. You have movement in your energy. So that's a good thing to know. Yeah, well, I guess in, in shamanism, they, you know, you're suppressing your fire, which mm -hmm. causes depression. Yeah. You're keeping, the, you're, keeping, you're, keeping it, you're keeping it under wrap rather Depressed. than suppressing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think when we express our fire in a healthy way without others being harmed by it, right. without it being a brush fire, yeah. I think then we're 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 on the road to finding our power and finding who we are and taking charge of ourselves or helping others as well. Yeah, that's so important because in our our social construct we are programmed to believe, especially women, that we're not supposed to get angry. That you know, it's unbecoming to get angry. Even men too. Sometimes it you know depends on situations, but you can't get angry about anything. But you're but you're right. At least uh, productive anger, however you take care of it, as long as there's movement, it um, it helps clear our channel. Well, I, I mean, it depends what, what you know how we're raised. If we come from a yeah. home where people suppress their emotions and feelings, they don't want other people to express theirs. Yeah. And they want to shame people for expressing it. So if it's a woman, they're going to make it extra feminine as if it's something unbecoming to express mm -hmm. yourself. Stop crying. I remember growing up here and my people say that to my cousins or other people I know. Yeah. And, from, and, from my, and especially as a guy, it's difficult to, you can cry at a certain age, but after a certain point, it becomes, I wouldn't say non-productive. It's healthy to cry, but at a certain age when you're growing up, you're not gonna, you don't you don't fit in as well you feel left out and that's something you're going to do in private if you can even do that because you, you, the inner world is saying don't cry it doesn't bother you as much as you think it does so you deny your feelings you deny the expression of your feelings and then you bury it and it gets stuck in your body whether it's male or female it's a you know healthy emotion for us to release ourselves and i think by crying we're actually validating what we're feeling and sometimes yeah. we don't know how to feel, so we can't cry. 
you know, people could watch a movie. Some people could naturally cry watching the movie. Other people could look at it and you could turn around and you see they're not touched by it at all. <laughs> they may be touched by it, but they not may, just may not be able to express it. Mm-hmm. You know, and each person's self-expression is different. And however they do it, that they feel good about it, whatever they're doing is probably the main thing of totally. how they can release it. Yeah. So you brought up shamanism. How did you get into, how did you get in, you're a shaman, but how did you start your journey with shamanism and in, in, in that yeah realm. i was it's interesting uh here's another interesting phenomenon that came later in terms of past life's past life readings for myself or actually working with clients again um but it was my work of i remember as a child seeing a commercial in the 60s when i was there was a commercial where it is a native american who would cry when he saw people throwing garbage out the car window i remember so, that one <laughs> Okay, and then he'd be tear. canoeing down a, down a stream, and he had a tear that came down his eye. That's that stuck with me for my life mm. tremendously. Yeah, I I, I I I I had great compassion for that person who was in that commercial or the who portrayed the scene, mm-hmm. and that had nothing to do with me going in shamanism. But then again, I thought it might have in terms of being a keeper of the earth, of trying to respect the earth itself and its beauty, and. Uh, so years ago, I, I went for a healing work with a man by the name of Itzhak Berry, who's a shamanic practitioner. He's written numerous books on the subject and had experiences, read his books, went, had a session with him. And uh, through that, I attended different sessions and I learned some of the techniques from the Kichwa tradition, which is in the Andes Mountains, which is the healing, the Olympia of clearing the energetic body, uh, you know, the different different energies that, that we accumulate, you know, through mm-hmm. different soul loss, uh, that we, the traumas that we experience in our lives. Mm-hmm. And so it was important for me to, to, to undertake and learn because of my connection to the earth and, 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 and the respect I had to learn the traditions of this, of this, of this area of healing and, and mindset. So I, I learned the traditions, I learned the, the techniques of energy removal, and I was important of understanding the, the different modalities that exist in terms of removing the things that we accumulate over time and how yeah. it can be removed and how doing a, a journey, uh, you can see the, that you get received the download. I received the download of information of where the trauma took place or mm-hmm. the situation that was, that was the impending variable, so to speak, that was, that caused the, the shift or the change in a person's direction where they no longer wanted to see their child, where the child was cut off or the, the point of stress where they said, I'm from here up, what's here down below. I don't want to deal with, I don't want to know from it. And that bothered me because if a person is tender to the harder aspects of ourselves, the part that was mistreated that we don't like but we're able to love and bring into ourselves back, then we become whole and it's easier for us to proceed on this path. So that was my motivation and my learning. And so I do, I do soul retrieval work and I do Olympia sessions of clearing the energy, energetic body from, from people. And it connects them to their soul, to their higher self. And so there's a connection as opposed to a disconnect. Nice. I love that. Yeah, that's... Um... So I think of shamanism, I'm remind, or the thoughts come to me of shamans healing uh, peoples, going down into the underworld and finding parts of us. Is sure, that animals. okay? Yeah. Yeah, going going into the lower realms is making a connection to the spirit realms. The lower realms is the is the animal. The connection okay. to the spirit animals. The spirit animals are, you know, an extension of our con- unconscious mind and the interpretation of what we're going through by asking a question uh, is usually portrayed by a specific spirit animal that will pass on the qualities of that animal to us in a vision or a feeling. I'll give you an interesting uh, scenario for myself. Last month I, or so, I was walking across a road here in this part, there's a park by me that I go, and... I'm walking and all of a sudden a snake stops right in front of me <laughs> and looks at me. Oh, wow. And, I st- and I, it was a, it was a garden snake, a garden snake, garden snake, which is not dangerous. 
Okay. But it was the imagery, it was the energy of the snake. And it and I got shooken up. And I said, Oh, that was something. And then I walked again the following week, and this another snake stopped and did the same thing. And then two days later, it happened again. And then I said, Wait a minute. Okay, so now I knew there was a message for me. And what was the message? And it and I interpreted it for what it was necessary for me to heal in my life and what I needed to do because the snake in shamanism is a healing healer. It's, it's to transform your life, to shed your skin, mm. to remove things that no longer serve you. And mm-hmm. I really asked, my, asked the question, what is no longer serving me that I'm holding on to, that I need to shed? And I shed it. And I felt I took a little more charge of my life over the last month or so. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And they can also appear to you in your dreams, right? In your dreams, in your meditations, the, the uh, animal yes, spirits. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's different animals for different reasons, like the eagle and the hawk, you know, the high, flying at a higher realm, looking from a different perspective, giving us a connection to the spirit realms, the eagle. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. The hummingbird as a bird itself, connecting to our ancestors, drinking from the nectar and trying to and and standing above everyone else and making the journey from Brazil to Canada, the tiny bird, wow, flying behind the geese that make that journey, and know where to stand so the wind doesn't affect them as much when they do this journey. And it, it's interesting because it's it's like our lives. If you dreamt of a hummingbird, which is rare, but if you did, if you, the hummingbird is like when the water is up to your nose and then the the water is parted, mm. like in the Bible. That's when the that's when the water was was when opened up just when it hit the person's when they hit their nose just at the last second. So the hummingbird teaches us, don't give up because at the last minute something can turn you away. Something, yeah, yeah. I love that. It's um, interesting that you said hummingbirds can uh, represent can represent ancestry ancestors. Is that what you said? Yeah, because yes. yeah. yes. I I notice there's a lot of. Um, ancestors grandparents especially the, when i do mediumship readings that they communicate with their loved ones through the hummingbird oh, that's interesting yeah well that would make sense yeah absolutely <laughs> it's the direction of the north okay the direction of, of the north yeah yeah i didn't even know that that's that makes i mean it makes total sense why they would use the hummingbird then yeah, the thing is, the thing, the, the, I guess the thing is to to remain to me to remain open, yeah, and be in a state of state of a wonder and imag- imagination, because when we're in that state, then we receive, we're receptive. When we clear our mind of thought and we just open to nature, we're then connected to what the messages that are being sent to us. So many times, things cross our path, but we're not aware of it because we're in our phone. Or we're looking down or straight ahead and we never look up or around yeah. and there's so much wonder that may exist if we just pick our head up away from what we're normally doing or sit on a park bench and look around had i been talking in fact i was walking with my friend as the snake went by a person didn't even see it so the <laughs> message was for me right so it was so interesting to me like in other words there are messages that we are meant to receive to help us and guide us if we just look and listen yeah, that's um, that's interesting when you say your friend didn't see the snake, but you did, and that message was for you. It reminds me of people who have shared experiences, uh, and this is going off on, in another direction, of UFOs in the sky, where they'll see it, or maybe a couple see it, but the people that are there won't see it, will absolutely not see what they see that's just so blatant blatantly clear to them that happened that happened with me as well oh really was that yeah was it well my girlfriend and i saw it together so but nobody else did because it was it was uh probably about two years ago in the summertime in july and i was at the beach and all of a sudden i just turned my head to the right and it was right there about four or five hundred feet in the air right off the coast of off the off the jersey shore and as soon as i looked at it it hovered, it stayed there, and then it took off on a 45 degree angle. But it was gone within a second. It, it shape shifted from what looked like a silver balloon to a craft that mm-hmm. took off. 
and you're in I, I was in wonderment of it because in the middle of the day and nobody looked at that degree to the right like I did I mean they may they may have saw it but I was maybe called to look that way and I looked and I saw right. it. I definitely I definitely saw that I've also had uh, I was driving in the car and it was in the winter time on in, by the airport and a blue ball a flash like a roaming candle just exploded over my car and I said is that something from the airport but not blue and yeah and it just lit up the area in front of my car while I was driving on it on the turnpike so I mean other people obviously saw that too I'm sure but it happened right in front of me so it was another another synchronized connection or moment for me wow yeah and I've had I've had other, you... I've had other experiences as well have you yeah, with had, UFOs had, or something? Well, yeah, well, it, it's interesting. Last two months ago, I had a dream. Well, I had dreams where a ship came over and I heard a woman's voice communicating with me and said, hi, Adam, and took off. Purple, blue lights in the dream. People said, "Don't come on in, come on in, come on in. In other words, it was the feeling of I want to see something and I'm interested in this. I feel a connection to this. And people saying, I don't believe this. Get back inside. Or... I, I don't believe you. And that happened twice in two dreams. But yeah, I had that. Then I had one evening where I was up in the middle of the night and I heard communication that said, look to the northeast. It was, and I looked to the northeast and I saw a light in the sky. I don't know. It could have been a plane or it could have been what, what I've just been mentioning. I, but it was exactly where I heard the, the connection or the inner voice mm -hmm. telling me where to look. And I opened up the blind and I said, oh, it's lit up there. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That was one of my next questions was um, if you consciously work with galactics or star beings. Well, I don't say consciously, but I do feel a connection in terms of I've had I've had people do readings for me and uh, healing work. And they say there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a galactic connection that that comes through for you of who's working with you or who's working with them to work with me. Um, so I've had that. And uh yeah, I feel a connection. I've, I've, you know, made, I've seen lights, you know, you see, I see lights in the sky yeah. going back and forth, orbs in the sky in certain directions. And I have a friend who sees that as well. So I guess there's some type of contact being made in some, in some way. Um, right. And I have, and, and everyone that I've communicated with throughout my life said, you know, I never told anybody this. And then I'd say, what is it? And they said, well, I was a kid. I saw this. So I saw that. And I never told them anything about what I've just told you. It was an older man who saw the Hindenburg when it exploded or when it was going to explode wow. in Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he said that day also, well, years before he was working as a teenager in the, in the mountains and a, a disc landed in front of his house or in front of the rush, the place he was leaving. And he never told anybody. And the same thing happened to another friend of mine. A disc, you said a disc right landed? Off. Yeah, the disc landed, disc. lights okay. flashed and then took off and then another friend of mine told me the same thing he says you know what i never told anybody about this but i don't know why he told me about ufos because i don't think i even mentioned it to him he just <laughs> brought the subject to me <laughs> yeah oh that's funny so it just goes to show that um we think we're in charge down here <laughs> maybe not necessarily so so much <laughs> I, I i think i think when we surrender then we yeah we have greater opportunities to receive things that you know like we like you're just saying yeah right totally that that's that's the hard part of surrender that was one of my biggest mm, biggest tasks i guess you could say that yeshua gave me 20 years ago was to, to surrender and i didn't even know what that meant well what do you mean surrender i'm what, what do you mean <laughs> so it it was um something that was uh difficult i think it's difficult for us to get it or to wrap our mind around it even does that make sense i think yeah well i i find it is i think that we're so attached to the 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 body in so far as that yeah. we when we lose when we lose track of the fact that we our soul goes on forever mm -hmm. and that we look at the human experience as finite right now in this body we want to attach ourselves in the ego state to whatever we can so that we don't lose what we've attained or lose what we are we have whatever we may we may have physically financially whatever it may be 
And so I think that when we do surrender, we lose the fear of we lose the fear of dying, and we also then accept the the life that we're leading, and we live it to its fullest. Because once we know that we will die and we surrender to it, then we have no op, no other choice but to surrender. It's just it, I don't think it's so much the fear of dying or leaving. I think it's maybe more of the fear of suffering and and the ego. Yeah, you know, the comparing ego. ourselves yeah. to what was, what was, and what is. And I think when we lose that that connection, not so much the external world, our physical, uh, well, I guess part of it is we're attached, we're attached to the, the competitiveness of looking good, which is naturally a, a survival technique for us to, to maintain ourselves. But I think when mm -hmm. we live within ourselves, within our own means as individuals, and we don't get caught up in comparing with other people, I think that's where we're in our power. And then yeah. I think it's easy for us to then surrender more. If, if that makes makes sense or no it does it does yeah when we kind of disconnect from the matrix of like you said judgment and always needing to be in control that type of thing and letting you know living your life of course but then also letting go of attachments and letting things be because that that was something that i struggled with i did some a couple of psilocybin ceremonies in journeying with a shaman <clears throat> that was so intense and i had partied back in the day and did much mush magic mushrooms and drank you know I, I just laughed the whole time i thought oh i'm just going to be laughing this will be fun <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like that at all and i was on this journey and i've often said i could write a book about each one of these journeys but i was on a journey where I felt that I was disappearing. I was leaving. I was disappearing and leaving my reality here, which obviously I was, but I kept bringing myself back because I was afraid that I was going to leave my, um, not, not necessarily my physical life, but, but my relationships. A relationship with my boyfriend you know i have my dog you know and my cat and that kind of thing so that's what was i was um fearful of which is attachment i guess but yeah yeah then well i so think it was scary I think, for that, I think that feeling yeah i think the f feeling of being alone i think we're so we we we, we build attachments with people so as to avoid ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And we look at we look at how the external world treats us and that teaches us how we should feel about ourselves rather than working from the inside out. Mm -hmm. I think if you if you take take the, the emptiness or the moments of loneliness within our lives and use it as our own impetus for our own self love and self growth, rather than relying upon the um the reinforcement of relationships from people. Which, re which normally will fail us if we rely sure. solely on them. We become codependent on other people's uh, interactions with us. Sure. So I think it's important for us to love. I think that's what I think that's what life teaches us. If we take that, take that, take the opening of it is to love ourselves, to learn to love ourselves. You know, I have issues um, through divorce as well. That was really also my impetus of learning self love, which is which is a challenge because. You know, if you love yourself, uh, it's not really selfish, but when we initially take that step, we, you hear it's selfish to love yourself, but the interpretation of what self-love is different. Right. Self-love is, self is accepting all aspects of yourself that you don't like and, 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 and uniting them together to, to try to, to live with that, those parts of yourself as one. Whereas we externalize those parts that we don't like on other people, and then we attract mm -hmm. those people into our lives and say, eventually, I don't like that person. I don't like mm -hmm. what that person became. No, that person's exposing the aspects of ourselves that we don't like about ourselves that we choose not to deal with. So that we externalize it on someone else, and then that other person becomes us in the external world. But that's them. I'm leaving them. So yeah. we leave ourselves in different bus stops along the way but eventually you have to pick them up in one school bus and say, get back on because I need you to heal. 
So it's so important for us not to shame ourselves, even though we may have been shamed, but to respect ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. We, we can't really give what we don't have, right? If we don't have right. that self-love, self-respect, or accepting of ourselves, how can we, how can we be, um, love others and be, <clears throat> be in a healthy, say in a healthy relationship with someone else if we don't have that with ourselves? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you can't, you can't make a cake without the ingredients. You can draw a picture of it. You can, you know, make a cutout of it, but you can't taste it. And I think mm -hmm. that's what happens when we're not given with intent, because if we don't generate self-love and learn on the earthly plane, what we're supposed to learn as our purpose, and we just go around in an, in a, in an inauthentic manner of yeah. fluffing things over and running from person to person and relationship to relationship, then we are always going to be faced with having to turn ourselves back to ourselves, like I said right. before. So, right. Yeah. yeah, I've I faced that in my life, and I think I think the, the path of the healing, the path, the dark night of the soul, either awoken through an out of body experience and NDE like yourself, or mm -hmm. through the traumas that we that push our soul to a different plane, you know, all bring us to a place of connecting to something outside of ourselves that give us that wisdom from our higher consciousness and our higher self, and yeah. Yeah. Sometimes some some of us need to be hit over the head, <laughs> like you know, have to be run over by a bus or whatever, or a trailer with a bus. My my stepdad used to say, if you don't listen to your your inner inner talkies, our inner workings or something, he didn't say spirit guys because he wasn't. We didn't have those conversations, but he said then um, they're going to hit you over the head with a two by four if you if if you don't listen sooner or later, you're going to get <laughs> right right. <laughs> The feather, the, feather, the feather or the brick. Yeah, right. I, I said, the, yeah. yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I'll, t I'll take the feather from now on. Thank you. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny um, com coming full circle sort of with past lives and soul retrieval is that Yeshua is the one who taught me about soul retrieval through past lives which is ironic, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say he's kind of a shaman in his own right. Very interesting. I, I think I told you this. I think we mentioned that. Well, I, the, the, the shaman that I know from Ecuador, I had that, that personal encounter maybe 40 years ago with Yeshua in, in the Amazon coming oh. off, a, off a mother, off a mothership. Um, and oh, that sounds what he looked, what, yeah, what Please he share. Like. And, yeah, I, I, he was. Uh, he explained to me that forty years ago he was called to the Amazon with a thousand people. They left their jobs, their business jobs. They came to the to the to the Amazon area where he was from Peru, uh, Ecuador, and uh, off the mothership came Jesus and Archangel Michael. Wow, and he said they're of the same. They're of the same frequency, or they are the yes. same. Yes, <gasps> yes. I've always felt them almost exactly the same. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So he expressed he was called to in front of all these people and to make to to come in contact directly in front and looked in his eyes, saw him, saw his skin color, what he looked like, and that was that was it. And then there was another person who initially invited him that he's made contact with but he won't share any more about his connection to the other person because mm -hmm. it was something more intense and i guess not for me to know i love that yeah. <laughs> came off a ship i love it uh yeah i had a a vision one time where <clears throat> during my meditations when he was working with me intensely i mean he still does but not like he, during my not, dark night of the soul type of deal um where I saw him walking, when he walked the planet as Yeshua, he was walking through a market. And I was seeing from an outside perspective. 
and people were gathering around him. They already knew that he was healing people, that type of thing. And, and they were going pretty much after him, wanting him to heal, calling him master, heal me, heal me, all this kind of thing, teacher, heal me. And and he was get, he was getting overwhelmed. I saw, as I'm watching this, a beam of light come down. It was a, a gold and white beam of light and bring and take him in that beam of light into a ship and remove him from the situation. Yeah. And I saw him. He showed me on the ship. He sat in meditation. He sat in lotus in meditation forever long. He was there. And then they, the beam of light put him down in a similar area. I mean, in that same area, but just a little ways away from the, the crowd. And, of course, they can make it to where people don't remember or see that type of thing there's terrestrial right, right. absolutely yeah it's amazing amazing <laughs> so that's so cool to hear that your shaman friend saw him coming yeah. out of a ship yeah <laughs> you know. i want to get i want to make a t-shirt i hope somebody doesn't beat me to it maybe i shouldn't say it was have like jesus is an et <laughs> well it's from the stories that I've heard and from other people who have the same interpretation and you you as well, it seems it seems to be pretty true or to be to to be something that could be, you know, understood. Yeah. I think a person was brought here to in the in the physical body with the wisdom of the millennium to try to what we weren't ready for it. So All right. that's what took place in the physical body. Yeah. But his teachings are uh, for now, I guess they're so yeah, important absolutely. now. Totally, the true teachings are finally coming out. Yeah, yeah. so um, amazing stuff. So, Adam, I do have a couple questions here that I ask guests. Starting to <laughs> see, everybody's asking people questions. I want to ask some questions. Okay. So, do you mind? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, what do you believe is the meaning of life here on Earth? Well, I view the the I view the the Earth itself as a school, and I believe that the meaning of life each person has a soul's purpose to use the body as a mechanism for the soul's soul's expansion and growth, and so I think we are on we're in a school. And we're here to try to work on some type of lesson that we need to, or some type of goal, so to speak, soul, soul goal or soul growth. And I think that's what the purpose of this earth is here to, to interact with other souls and using the human body. Um, and to also take in the beauty that exists around us, to notice the water, the blue water, the blue skies, um, yeah. the animals, nature. I think I think we're supposed to work on ourselves, teach others. We're supposed to walk each other home and find our way, and then help others find their way in the process of our own suffering. So this way, we're an example, and people don't people are motivated then to change as you being the teacher. So I think we're here to teach each other to get home and to use the, the earth as a school. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Do you have, do, yes, do you have any advice for anyone who might be struggling right now? Well, I think, I think, as I said before, and I think it's important to know that we're all, we all struggle. Mm -hmm. The people who struggle and admit they struggle are the ones who teach others and grow. And I think the people who don't admit their mistakes or their shortcomings um, retard themselves, but try to then hold and retard others. So I think it's important for us to look inside ourselves at our own darkness and expose it in, in, the, in the best way we can at the most comfortable way we can so that we help ourselves and help the future generations to have the strength and power and resiliency to go forward. And in and find 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 their way. Yeah. Lovely. Nice. Thank you. 
And this one's easy. <laughs> well, they all are kind of. Where can people find you and your work? Where can they find me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my, you can find me at my email address. Uh, actually, not my email address. You can find me at my uh, website, which is Adam Gell Universal Healing. Okay. dot com um and i offer the different modalities and different things of trying to help people find their past lives connect to that energy overcome them overcome that and recognize what happened in the past may be happening right now if we don't learn from the past right and we don't recognize it and again to create that bridge so yeah so you can contact me at my at my website and nice. i have my youtube channel conversations with adam gell and inspiring minds Nice. Thank you. And your documentary is on YouTube. Yeah, my documentary Forgotten is on YouTube, yes. Yes. And you are writing a book, you said, correct? Yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the process of, of, of correlating my documentary film into, uh, into a book where I have much more details and diary entries and great stories of, 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 of my childhood and what I experienced and my my, my journey through life and, you know, being unforgettable, forgettable to unforgettable. In other words, people who are forgotten and then become unforgettable. Or we all have basically what my, the main premise is, is that we don't have to be a movie star. We don't have to be famous to be remembered. Mm. How will we re be remembered? Mm -hmm. Even if, if even, nowadays we have no photos, we take a picture, we don't, we don't make a print of it. It used to be yeah. even if you had a photo and it fell out of a photo album, a person would say, who's this person? And some person would say, I don't even know. Yeah. That was your so-and-so. For me, it's important. Just I want to be remembered. Right. I, want I want my children to remember me. I want people to know that we have struggles, we have accolades, and that we have our ups and downs. And this struggle is not for naught. It should be remembered. And we should be remembered. And our ancestors should be remembered. And even the difficult ones, they taught us the most lessons of who we are today. So I think it's important for us to remember and not to be forgotten. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we close? No, that's it. That's yeah. It. Well, yes, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and it's been lovely talking with you again. And hopefully you, we'll talk again. Would you mind coming back Absolutely. sometime? And we can, okay. So I kind of feel we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Yes, I know. I know. We could we could go on and on. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone for for watching, and please do the YouTube thing, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff, and until we see you again. Okay.